USA Ultimate is proud to present the 2016 USA Ultimate National Championships. Welcome back to Rockford, everybody. It is Championship Sunday, and our triple header of championship coverage begins in the mixed division with Connecticut Metro North and Boston Slow White regional rivals meeting with everything on the line from Wedgbury Stadium here in Rockford. Yesterday, Metro North stormed past mischief. It was a tremendous comeback for the gentlemen and ladies from the Nutmeg State. Slow White knocked off the three-time defending champs, Dragon Thrust, to reach the finals. Good morning, everybody. Delighted to have you with us. Evan Leppler with Robin Wiseman. There will be a new champion in the mixed division today for Slow White or Metro North. It will be the first time they rise to the top. These are two teams very familiar with each other. What do you think that means today? Well, in addition to being familiar with each other and playing each other so many times throughout the season at sanctioned and unsanctioned events, both teams run very similar offenses. They have, you know, similar offensive handlers and Chris Mazur for Metro North and Miles Montgomery Butler from Slow White, who slice and dice their opponents on offense, finding very strong women cutters. They have some great deep receivers. So it'll be very interesting to see how these styles clash today in the championship game. Both teams seem very relaxed before the game. Connecticut Metro North has been a team that has been put together from a few different teams in the New York, Connecticut area, and they really have combined talent to raise expectations. They're a veteran team. What can you tell us about Metro North? Metro North has, has been in this position before. We have a lot of players who played for District 5 and have been in this championship game before. Um, some players as many as four times in the mixed division. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they can get the job done and finally take that championship. They knew they could be in this spot at 2016 Nationals when Chris Mazur signed on. He wanted to play again with John Corber and Andy Bosco, and he is a special talent. Yeah, Chris Mazur is so unpredictable because he has so many throws to use. He just he distributes the desk better than almost any man in the open or mixed divisions. He took over the semifinal game against Mischief yesterday. Boston Slow White back in the championship game, but they're looking for their first title. Very close to a triple crown possibility if they could have taken the Pro Flight Finale Championship, but they won the U.S. Open. They've got to be considered the favorite, but the last time they played Metro North, they lost to them in the regional final. Yeah, Slow White has the, the capability to, to take over this game, but playing an opponent who knows them very well and knows how to game plan a, around trying to minimize the impact of Tanner Johnson or Miles Montgomery Butler, um, the women match up very evenly, so it should be a very exciting game. And you talk about the females on Boston Slow White. What about Lexi Zalk? How important is she to the effort? Having Lexi Zalk back in their roster opens up their deep game to their women, um, and she's also fantastic as a thrower you know, using a very pre precise forehand to get the disc moving, you know, really confident at breaking the mark and helping get, you know, players like Tanner Johnson the disc. In the win against Dragon Thrust yesterday, Lexi Zalk played 15 points. Slow White scored 11 of those 15 points that she was on the field. She'll be pivotal today, and we are ready for championship action. It's Connecticut Metro North and Boston Slow White. The first of three championship games today from Rockford begins in just a couple minutes. The 2016 USA Ultimate National Championships are presented by Discraft Ultra Star, the official disc of USA Ultimate. Discraft Ultra Star now available at over 1,900 U.S. retail locations, including all Dick Sporting Goods and Hibbit Sports Stores. Buy five Ultimate, apparel made specifically for Ultimate players by Ultimate players. Visit fiveultimate.com for everything from Discraft Ultra Stars to jerseys, shorts, and custom team uniforms and by the Women's Sports Foundation, ensuring quality and leadership opportunities for girls and women through sports. We are ready to go from Rockford. Starting lineup for Connecticut Metro North. They will begin on offense with Corber, Bosco, Yum, Sean Murray, Chris Mazur, Andy Bosco, one of the leaders and captains, and Lauren Doyle, who has been so important throughout the weekend as one of their top female talents. Ray Steinhauer, Princeton class of 2007. He's been leading Metro North from the sidelines. Boston Slow White, led by Marshall Goff. We talked about Lexi Zalk in the open, but Robin, Miles Montgomery Butler, he's gonna 
have a lot of the duties guarding Chris Mazur today, and he was so important yesterday, converting turnovers into breaks for Slow White. Yeah, Miles applies a lot of great pressure to handlers, and it, it'll be great to see if he can limit some of Mazur's options and how he's able to distribute the disc downfield. Low 60s in the morning, cloudy, but not too breezy, especially compared to a couple days ago. Metro North's Andy Bosco receives the pull in the opening point today. Chris Mazur had a hiccup on the opening point yesterday, and then he went to give one of the great individual performances in a big game in the history of the mixed division. He was unstoppable. And it's Dave Truesdale who picks him up on the opening possession. And Mazur called a foul, and there does not appear to be a contest. Robin, you got to be teammates with Chris Mazur in London, the lead up to London. What was it like being his teammate? I know you gave him a hard time yesterday, but then you watched him do work as well. Yeah, Mazur has, I mean, his attitude, it just brings so much levity in situations that can be super intense and really difficult to stay focused, but he just has a way of motivating people and keeping them positive. The first deep shot looking for Korber. And it was defended well by Miles Montgomery Butler. Positioning enabled him to get the turnover. You see Metro North's O-line running a, a zone with their women around the disc. Um, that's something that Metro North is really known for. They have some very tall, very athletic women, and they can really use them in, to, to take away this, the options that men handlers have on the field. John Korber, the deep, deep at the back of the zone. And when these two teams met in the regional final just a few weeks ago, it was the offenses that dominated the game. I think Metro North only had three turnovers. Slow White only had a few more than that. There weren't that many breaks, so breaks will be at a premium today, you'd think, with the conditions being as tranquil as they are. That's a gorgeous hammer over the top of Mazer, finding Sean Doherty. And Slow White maneuvers into the red zone. Montgomery G Butler going with a uniglove. Naked right hand, gloved left hand. Say the same for some of his other teammates. Davis Whitehead takes the shot, got it. Slow white breaks on the opening point with that filthy scuba to Kirsten Lundquist. One thing you'll notice about that throw from Davis Whitehead is you have to make sure that as a thrower, you get that off quickly and with a lot of velocity, which is often difficult with a scuba kind of, you know, going cross field like that. You've got Korber patrolling the deep space and, and baiting that type of throw, but he gets it off with a good amount of velocity and, and hitting his receiver pretty quickly, not giving Korber an opportunity to get there. Davis Whitehead, the 25-year-old out of Middlebury College, originally from Atlanta, picks up the assist. Played in the men's division with Madison Club, played in the mixed division with Madison Noyes. It's really fun to see him, you know, go back to Boston and make an impact on a slow white team that's very strong. I mean, anytime you're able to see someone from your, you know, your community go and excel elsewhere, it's, it's really nice. Kirsten Lundquist, that was not a, an easy catch, but she made it look easy. Boston Slow White here at Nationals has taken care of business in the impressive win in the quarterfinals over Amp 15-7. The mixed team from Philly fell to Metro North in what was considered the pool of death in, in pool play with Metro North and Amp and Blackbird and Ambiguous from DC. I thought Blackbird had a chance to win that pool. They ended up going 0-3, very talented team, but well, every team in that pool was particularly talented. Mazur still out there for Metro North. Him and Bosco will do much of the heavy lifting in the handler core. Ken
Kendra Frederick Bosco up the line for Lauren Doyle. The handler movement between Bosco and Mazur is really what stifled mischief down the stretch yesterday. And this is going to be a turnover, no call. Metro North's first red zone giveaway. I like the line that uh, Julie Sussman takes, you know, to pressure that pass from Mazur. What looks to be a wide open inside backhand, she took a great line you know, to get that inside arm into the into the lane to deflect it. A tremendous bid on that far sideline. Hannah Baranis pulls it in. Up the line for Andy Schachter and into the end zone. Well, it's the Connecticut team that's been named after a train line from New York to Connecticut. But Boston has the break train going early, back-to-back -back breaks at the outset. It, it all started with, um, with Hannah's layout grab. To keep that possession going, looked like maybe the mark had changed force, and it gave really quick, easy movement up that break sideline. Ben Katz from Andy Schachter. Slow White has beaten Metro North several times this year, and they've met many, many times. They first met Mixed Easterns back in early June. Metro North fell to Slow White 15-11. The Boston invite, Devons, June 26th. Slow White 15-9 over Metro North. At the US Open, they played again in the semifinals of that tournament. 15-10 win for Boston Slow White. They did not meet in the pro flight finale, but in Northeast Regionals, it was Metro North that played the perfect game. And well, it was a different team for Metro North at Regionals and Nationals compared to the rest of the season. They were a, a low numbers team during the regular season. Chris Mazur didn't join them until Regionals. And in fact, he didn't play on Saturday at Regionals because he was terribly sick with food poisoning. Didn't come to the fields as really his first game with the, with the team was that regional final. And he helped to make the difference. Oh, and how about the handler defense on Mazer from Slow White. Sean Doherty with a layout block. Slow White could not have asked for a better start. Another great throw from Montgomery Butler finds its target. Olivia Hampton with a slow white score. Yeah, this turnover came from, I mean, Mazer's, you know, just trying to clear space and, and give that around option. And not surprised that it got blocked. Olivia Hampton just stretched the field deep attacked wide open space, was beating two Metro North defenders deep to that, that open side. Montgomery Butler just so precise, puts it where only Hampton can make a play on it. Timeout called by Metro North as this Boston slow white team looking for its first championship. Olivia Hampton with the goal. Slow White, originally founded back in 2004, largely by a, a group of friends at Boston University. They started as a summer league team. Mike Miller, who's now an assistant coach. Steve Sullivan, the ageless one, is still a member of the team. Rosie Agno, Eitan Goldberg, Chris Kelly, also part of that founding core. The first Middlebury connection was a byproduct of Jasper Hoitzma playing high school ultimate with Chris Farina. And Chris Farina was the first Middlebury guy to join Slow White. And because of him, that pipeline started. And Peter Pryle came. And you know, they really built a pipeline with Chris Waite as well. And there have been you know, a lot of great players who have gone to play mixed and, and, and women's and open. 
have started it slow wide. I mean, Emily Bacher, Becky Malinowski, both had some great seasons with slow wide. Becky Malinowski just started as a junior in college with this mixed team at nationals. Megan Schollhammer, great player with Fury, started with slow wide at the beginning. So there's a lot of history with this Boston slow wide team. And, and frankly, it's surprising that they haven't won a title. They're off to a great start today to try to change that. Yeah, I think Slow White has recruited a lot of really great young athletes, and as they're, you know, starting their upward trajectory towards Elite Ultimate, you know, they move away and they go pursue ultimate careers with other teams. So they do kind of have a lot of turnover from year to year, but a good amount of consistency from last year to this year in Slow White's roster. First chance in the championship game for Slow White since 2007 when they lost to Shazam Returns from Seattle. Year before that, it was San Francisco Mischief that got the best of Boston Slow White in the finals. Can Metro North right the ship here? As you can see, the Connecticut team is going to rely on its top players throughout the game. Chris Mazur hasn't left the field yet. John Korber has been a regular. Andy Bosco as well. And now Dave Tadean. Slow White switching there on defense. Davis Whitehead picking up Mazur as he made that upline cut. Oh, goodness. Whitehead made that throw so hard for Mazur. It was deflected but caught anyway by Andy Bosco. In that end zone possession, you, you see a lot of, you know, exchange between Bosco and and Mazur just trying to be patient and wait until something opens up downfield. Um, you see that Kendra Frederick Bosco, you know, she's a big athlete, and it looked like that throw is intended for her, but her husband catches the deflection, you know, and able to hold on to that score. Kendra Frederick Bosco was one of the first, you know, real big elite athletes that I had the opportunity to match up on, and, you know, over the years, have really, I've really enjoyed having kind of the opportunity to reach out to her and and have her answer some tough questions and kind of help me with that mental part of my game. You know, she's she's just such a strong competitor and I have always really admired her. What are the, some, of, some of the things you would ask her? I'm actually preparing for some of the, uh, the national tryouts. You know, she's so approachable. She actually, you know, is, was huge in, in propelling the University of Wisconsin's women's team into what, the, what it has become today and kind of bonding over that you know, being a coach in that program now, she just gave some great advice about kind of how the day is set up, and it's really about mental toughness and staying strong from start to end. First offensive point for Slow White. Tanner Johnson, so important for Boston's effort. Big cutter in the 15 shirt downfield. Alex Trahey and Vicki Chang, reliable handlers. Along with Jeff Smith, who's been one of the anchors of Boston Slow White for many, many years. And oh goodness, that should have been caught off the deflection. Now we get to see that Metro North uh, D-line offense that was so crucial in getting them back in the game against Mischief. They're very quick on their attack and getting the disc moving for into dangerous positions off those turns. Eugene Young had a good game yesterday against Mischief, keeps the disc alive. And to the end zone, a remarkable toe tap for the goal. Incredible catch by Ben Ivers for the Connecticut break. That disc came off pretty quickly to Ivers in the end zone, but I liked, 
I liked how he was able to keep that toe in, in, in bounds and, and get that into a score. It was Batista who had the chance off the deflection for Slow White. He couldn't come up with it. And this is what you're talking about with this Metro North D-line offense, right? Yep, quick movement and getting it all the way to the break side as soon as they can. And they have immediate continuations upfield. Again, that, that throw came off pretty fast, but Ivers was able to get that toe down and make sure that it was a score. If he would have taken a slightly different angle towards the disc, he may not have been able to, uh, to keep that foot in bounds. Alex Grin perhaps put this a little close to the sidelines, but clearly dragging those feet. He got both down, I believe. Yeah, such great body awareness and control to, to make that play. Ivers out of Indiana University, formerly played with Seven Express. Metro North D still out there as Smith connects with Johnson. And downfield, the disc floats to a white jersey. Mary Glickman keeps it alive. Johnson currently in his sophomore year at UMass. And a slow white hold. Herman to Smith. Yeah, Glickman was able to keep that disc alive. If you notice that the Metro North uh, women cutter defenders downfield were trying to pass, you know, the, the women off and kind of poach to take away some of that deep space right away. So you see that disc pop up. Vicki Chang's wide open, but Carrie Byer isn't quite able to make that play because she wasn't actually guarding anybody. She was, she was closing that space. But Glickman, you know, does a great job of keeping that play alive. One thing that, that Metro North has done a pretty good job of is keeping Tanner Johnson, you know, cutting for under yards and, and not, you know, having not receiving the disc deep, really containing him to, to have to distribute the disc as opposed to score goals. After the play, Tanner Johnson was down on the field, shaken up a bit. And he's walking gingerly, obviously, from that end zone to the sideline. Certainly a matter of concern for Slow White and UMass. Not sure if we can go back to a wide angle and, and watch the end of that play again and try to see if anything happened to Johnson or if it was a non-contact thing. He's one of the great young talents in the sport. And when he signed on to play with Slow White this year and they got Miles Montgomery Butler back and Lexi Zalk returned, I mean, when these pieces came together, that's kind of when Slow White started to realize, hey, this, this could be the year for us. And they've tried to live in the moment, not focus on that, but there is that cloud over this program. They've been so good. They've been to nationals every year forever. They've been to semifinals. They've been to finals. They have not won at all. Nice bid. Apparently there was no foul call, but everyone else on the field stopped. Look at the middle of your screen here. You see Tanner Johnson. Oh, goodness. He just goes down. Coming to that one. What do you think? You just have to hope that it's not a knee or an ankle. You know, those are those big joint injuries, they, they're they hard to, to play through because there's there's such complex joints. Boss goes, swings it to Dayan. Really good defense from Sean Doherty cutting off 
the cut Mazur wanted. You got Mazur kind of in the middle of the field in this fairly unorganized Metro North offense. They form a little bit more of a straight stack now. Getting it back to Mazur behind the disc. Really impressive defense from Slow White. Should have led to a turnover. But the ricochet was caught by Bosco, and he quickly hits today and in the end zone. One thing you'll notice about that Metro North offense is that their cutters are continuing all the way, almost even with the handlers to that break space. So Kendra Bosco uh, is able to, you know, to get that disc in the break in the break side, looking for Lauren Doyle. But again, the disc is deflected. Andrew Bosco catches another deflection to keep the possession alive. You know, able to just quickly move that disc upfield. Seen several fortuitous ricochets for each team in the opening seven points of this one. And you have to give credit to Andrew Bosco for being able to stay with those plays and watch the disc all the way into his hands. I mean, in that play, to quickly turn up field and find someone wide open after making a play like that. It's just maturity and experience. Andy Bosco, 30 years old, out of Western Connecticut State. Played for Pony, played for District 5. Connecticut Metro North stormed through the pool of death. And I remember on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. they played Blackbird. At one point in the first half, Blackbird was up 6-3. And on that super windy day, it was not easy to get upwind breaks. Metro North was able to storm back and win that game. Really set the tone for the weekend. You see Slow White coming down with a like a more horizontal stack pull play. Miscommunication there. Alex Trahey could not connect with Jeff Smith. Yeah, it looked like Jeff Smith was thinking about making that throw before he made the catch. Both D-lines have converted every break chance they've had so far. They have not had any multi-turnover points yet. Eugene Yum. Lefty backhand of the end zone, bidding and scoring. Lucas Murphy's got it to tie it up. Did not look like that was his intended space to put that throw. You know, with Slow White, the there were many defenders in that space that could have made the play, but it, it was almost as though they didn't know that the disc was up. Kind of just puts that disc out to space. You can see him give, give his intended receiver the nod, but looked like it was a little bit too far upfield. Yeah, it looked like he was seeking Ole. Billy Ole, number 45, was kind of making that cut right there. And he peeled off, collided with Slow White's Vicky Chang. Great awareness by Murphy. Yeah, that's a play that you really do expect Jeff Smith to make and kind of expect to be coming. So for all, Slow White technically still up a break, beginning the game with three in a row. But a strong four-run rally to get back into it. And you see Chris Mazur stepping onto this D-line for Metro North. Yesterday in that comeback against Mischief, he was integral in, in in the D-line offense and getting that disc moving off of those turns.
See if Slow White's offense can convert an easy hold. A pick was called downfield. Meanwhile, Tanner Johnson is on the sideline. He was walking around moments ago trying to get loose again. It was almost like something in the back of his leg, his hamstring or his calf got caught. Hopefully just a cramp and nothing structural, no muscle strains. And well, he's walking a little gingerly, but it's good to see him moving around. Goodness gracious. How many times has that happened so far? And it does again. Metro North has to be feeling, why can't we get that D? <laughs> Sullivan, in his 10th year with Slow White, has the disc. Anytime you're ready, six. 33 years old out of BU. Trey Heat to Chang. Beg your pardon, that's Rosie Agno, and her throw goes astray. Again, these throws are just popping up. The wind is picking up a little bit. Um, it's more of a crosswind, but it looks like a lot of these throws just, just the throwers are finishing high so that the disc is popping up. You can credit Vincent Fiaco with the D. Here we go. Looking for Doyle. Yep. As soon as Doyle swung that disc off of the line to Chris Mazur, she just took off deep. Her defender just kind of stayed in the lane a little bit, allowing her to, to attack that deep space. Again, she breaks it off the line to Chris Mazur. The disc works all the way up to that other sideline. Get a wide open thrower and really great awareness by that Metro North male player to stay out of the play. You know, if he would have attacked that deep space, could have brought his defender into that deep space, allowing you know him to make a play and get that disc instead of Lauren Doyle. Second assist for Alex Grin as Doyle delivers. Lauren Doyle was a pretty big pickup for Metro North. She was very impactful for Bent in the women's division last year as a handler. So to see her come over and make, you know, an impact on both the O-line offense and the D-line transition offense for Metro North, you know, she's seen a lot more D-line points after the injury of Liz Middleton. You know, Liz Middleton was a longtime Boston women's player, you know, playing for Godiva. She's just really known as this quick give and go distributor with a lefty, you know, high release backhand that's almost unstoppable. So when she went down with that injury, it really gave Lauren Doyle some more opportunities to get on some of those D-line points and keep the, the offense moving off the turn. Timeout was called by Slow White. You've coached, you've captained, you've been in a lot of games that have ebbed and flowed. Is that timeout, you think, more tactical or more emotional? I think more emotional. I think that the slow white offensive line has good strategy. I like how they're, they're, they've transitioned to that horizontal stack for pull plays to take advantage of, of those women poachers on Metro North. It's really just to make sure that the energy and focus is nice and even, you know, they're playing loose, even though they're getting into a position where it's easy to lose focus or intensity. I think it was just to collect themselves and, and reset. So we're back on serve. The game began with three straight slow white breaks. And then we had a Metro North break, consecutive holds, one for each team, turnover free. And then two more Metro North breaks of the slow white offensive line. Eugene Young with the pull. Tanner Johnson back on the field for Slow White. And he throws it away. Good to have him back on the field, that turnover notwithstanding. But if Metro North 
can continue its D-line offense mastery. Now sees control of this first half. Bobbled, but hung on to by Garrity. Kendra Frederick Bosco needs a reset, gets one. Murphy swings it. Garrity, who had an insane momentum-changing layout, Callahan yesterday, and there's perhaps a momentum-changing turnover. The D from Trehe. Johnson floats it to space, no. Right when that left his hand, Johnson put his right hand to his head as if he knew it was a little too far. Rachel Westgate's known for being an aggressive, deep receiver who's willing to throw her body on the ground, but that disc just came off too hot and she wasn't able to, to make that play, but it's definitely a play that she's known to make. Wow. There were only six total turnovers in the game's first nine points. But now two turnovers per side on this 10th point of the mixed final. And Slow White punches it in for the offensive hold. Smith to Zalk. You'll see Lexi Zalk, you know, on that on that score, she just explodes off the front of that stack as soon as the disc starts swinging. So she starts setting that cut up even before Smith receives it, hitting, hitting that front cone. And although that Metro North defender, you know, was able to pressure that pass a little bit, you know, she was still wide open, had clear line of sight to the disc. Zalk, a product of Middlebury. Was told she was a high jumper when she was younger. Played for Slow White back in 11 and 12. This is her first year back, and she has really been a huge addition. Jeff Smith with the assist there, and Slow White scoring that point despite two Tanner Johnson turnovers. This is the first of three championship games today. Coming up about 30 minutes after this one, San Francisco Revolver and Boston Ironside. Matchup that needs little hype in this ultimate community. And later today, the top two seeds in the women's division will clash Seattle Riot and Boston Brood Squad. In both those finals, as the disc goes up, Oh, and it was again deflected, but caught. And then Slow White comes up with a D. This is wacky stuff. Low throw dug out by Katz. Both the men's and the women's championship games. The two seed is the defending champ. The one seed is the challenger. And that disc was out of bounds. Lack of awareness there gives it away. We'll have an opportunity to see the O-line, you know, work in transition here for Metro North. Oh, and how about that coach from Julie Sussman? You know, Julie Sussman's out of bounds. You know, she's going to work hard to get that disc back. She's a longtime veteran player. Sussman airs it out. What a catch. No, it was dropped. Was it a foul or was like it a no turnover? Call. Holy cow. It looked like Doherty had it. And Bosco will take the timeout. What a crazy point. Nice, just poached layout grab by, by Julie Sussman. And she's looking to find any options. The stall count gets higher. And she, you know, makes a pretty good play based on how the field looked for her receivers downfield. 
Andrew Bosco puts his body out there to, to just pressure that throw and perhaps just he lost the, the sight of the disc and wasn't able to reel it in. Throughout Julie Sussman's career, we've seen her make plays like what she just did. The throw intended for Chris Mazur. She poaches into the lane. What's the secret of being a good poach defender? Having that anticipation and seeing the, the, the play develop in front of you, um, she does such a great job of knowing when you know she can leave her person on, on a person defensive matchup assignment. And she is so great at taking an angle to avoid contact. And she is. She's really known for that. Um, it's been it's been fun to watch her game again as somebody who admires strong defense. It's been said that championships are won on fluky plays. Matter of inches from time to time. Richardson had that D but couldn't complete the D. And then Katz with the interception. You didn't have an injury so Seth Kennedy replacing Andy Bosco. Bosco took an injury. Keep an eye on the 26 shirt in black. Mazer great, launches. Great, de great around throw from Doyle to set that throw up. Ripped away by Katz. And given right back. So after nine points with zero or one turnovers, we've had more turnovers on this point and the last point than the previous nine combined. Pick, call. Pick called downfield. You, know, you watch Chris Mazur in a, a system like Metro North, and while he hasn't played with him a ton, he is given a lot of leeway. You know, the great sockeye player, former Oregon few coach Lou Burris wrote about the rule breaker on offense and the one guy who's allowed to basically do what he needs to do or what she needs to do to get the disc in certain situations. And if you watch Mazer, especially when he's in the stack, he's given a lot of priority to make plays. Today and gets the reset for Kennedy. Today and marked by Richardson to the end zone. I'm not sure who that was intended for, but it worked out. One thing that really stood out about that last possession for Metro North was their ability to gain yards back in the middle of the field off of those swings. So they attack that break space and they have big yards in the middle of the field. They retain possession in the middle and they kept the middle of the field open for you know one on one matchups. Got a little crowded on that that score. But again, there's enough space to get that in there without any defenders nearby to make that play. Seth Kennedy coming on for Andy Bosco really did a lot of things well to maneuver the disc down the field and he capped it off with the score. Just sailed by the right arm of Allison Young but Kennedy was there. Out of Cornell University. And today in Dishes it out. Kennedy, a big part of the Show Your Mouth team that really combined with many of District 5 to create Metro North. And it, it really does allow them to, to pick up a player, you know, like Chris Mazur, who played with District 5. Even though he's not, you know, around playing so, uh, every single tournament with the team, it's just playing with his friends that he's played with for years. Smith launches. Batista catches. And dishes for the score. Batista to Herman. The leading goal scorer for Slow White here at Nationals 2016 has another. Right now we have a crosswind, and so 
Slow White puts the disc out to the high side of the field or the break side, finding Jeff Smith with some momentum and nobody blocking that, his line of sight at his deep receiver. Rachel Westgate kind of diverts the attention of the, the Metro North trailing defenders, you know, right next to Batista, opening up the middle of the field for a pretty easy look. You played several years in the mixed division. What do you remember specifically about matching up with both Slow White and the old District 5 Metro North area teams? I mean, these are two teams that are known for having some of the strongest women in the division. You know, they're just huge athletes. You see a lot of height. You know, they're, they're just big, explosive women. And you can't poach off of somebody like that because if, if you're poaching under, they're gonna they're gonna hit those women deep and they're gonna punish you. If you're worried about getting beat deep, they're they're gonna be happy taking you know an under and distributing the disc before you can even catch up. Pretty big pull from Tanner Johnson, who's out there for this deep point. Johnson poaching into the lane for a while, then chases down John Palmer. Bosco back on the field. Dishes to his wife, Kendra Frederick Bosco. Mazer. And a pick away from the disc. It'll stay with Mazer. Hold up, hold up. Shoelace timeout. Chris Mazur was a baseball player at the oh, high school oh, level and then thought he could walk on to the team at the University of Miami. He tried to. Literally the day he left a baseball workout and was saying to himself, I can't do this. I'm not that good. I can't play in the ACC. He walked by an ultimate practice. It was the Miami Refugees Masters team that had just won a world championship in Finland. And that was really his first exposure to ultimate. He started playing with them. He started playing everywhere. And he's turned into one of the elite players in any division. It's not shocking to hear someone with the throwing repertoire of of Mazer learning from a bunch of Masters players. Mazer picks up another assist. Taylor Simpson, her first year with Metro North. She was great at tryouts, has been great all season. Commuting from Albany. She does a little shoulder shimmy just to get her defender back on her heels and open up that, that space to the open side, just enough to Maz for Mazer to put that out in front of her so that her defender couldn't make a play on it. Simpson out of RIT. Grew up in Ithaca, New York. One of the neatest things about this Metro North team is that it's comprised of players who you know, didn't play at these big ultimate universities, mm -hmm. you know, that they they just love playing ultimate and they love playing ultimate together. Yeah, that's and, a really good point. And you can see that they, when they play, they just have this joy about them on the field. They're smiling, they're loose, they're having fun. They're really encouraging. And it, it does, it kind of shines through that these are players who played at smaller schools, you know, with different cultures than some of these players from big name universities. And it's a, a team of veterans. The, the youngest player on the team is Taylor Simpson, who just caught that goal. She's 25. Their coach, Rafe Steinhauer, said something really interesting to me before the game, putting it in a really good context. He said, for a large chunk of our roster, this might be the last game they ever play at the competitive level. And a lot of these veteran players have started families, they made this commitment to be a part of this team to try to make this run. When you think about that, there's a lot riding on this. I'm not certain we'll see Metro North in the pro flight next year. They're uncertain about their commitment going forward. It, it feels a little bit like this could be a, a coronation to cap this program, but that's a decision for another day.
Oh, nice grab. Trey, he flips it to the end zone too far. Yeah, when Chris Mazur peeled off his offender to go and pressure that pass, you know, it created a wide open throw, or a scoring opportunity. And Slow White's not able to capitalize on that. Foul call is rescinded. And an opportunity for Metro North to take it downfield and break for half. We're even right now, three breaks per side in this first half. Slow White had the first three, Metro North has had the three since. Very similar to what Metro North did against Mischief yesterday, falling behind and then really turning things around against Evan Boucher and Eric Greenwood and the rest of Mischief. Oh, wide open, Mazur going deep, he broke free, he's got it. And Metro North takes half after trailing three zip. I mean, we saw something very similar against Mischief yesterday. As soon as Metro North generates a turn, their D-line goes to work on offense. They move the disc quickly, you know, they, they get yards on those swings and really work hard to change the side of the field they're attacking. Another thing that they do so well is atta attacking those handlers, you know, from that opposite sideline into that deep space. You see Chris Mazur, you know, he starts swinging the disc, and then the next thing you know, he's busting deep downfield and catches his defender just kind of losing interest and wanting to help poach in, in a different lane. Do you try to teach your young handlers once or twice a game you threat deep because you're going to catch your defender off guard? And a lot of times, you know, handler defenders are known for being quick, you know, in lateral spaces and, and very explosive, but may not have the best, like, straight ahead speed. So if you have a good handler who's willing to attack that deep space, you can often find them just as open as Mazer was in that, that deep space. Chris Mazur dropped the pull on the first point yesterday. I asked him about that. He said, look, it wasn't my first drop pull, and it won't be my last. But he turned the page really fast. He said the thing he was most upset about was that they didn't set the mark properly like they had discussed on the line. They were so discombobulated. But a great first half performance from Mazur and Metro North. And we're joined now by Rafe Steinhauer, the head coach of Metro North. Congrats on a great first half. What was the key to changing things around after you fell behind 3 nothing? You know, I, I don't really know. I mean, <laughs> Slow White usually brings out the best in us. Uh, our two last regionals games against them, I think our offense had a total of uh, three breaks. So to uh, meet that number of the first three points of the game was not something I expected. But I think at this point, it's just about grit and determination. And we showed that that first half. But still another half left. And it's coming back to the Northeast no matter what. But we hope it's coming back to Mianus. Um, the the offense on the turn, you guys are so fast in transition. You know, is there a certain line that you like to run? I see that there's been a lot of different switches in terms of personnel on the D-line. Yeah, we like to play our full roster. I'm, we're super deep. Um, you know, I think the key for us this season, why we played better at nationals than we have in the rest of the season, is our handlers work a lot harder on our D-line. We've had a tendency all year to play fast all the way up until the red zone and then kind of relax, hope maybe one throw will score. Uh, but the thing we've done really well all weekend and we'll need to continue to do if we're going to win this title is uh, work all the way through the end of the point. That's been our focus all weekend. I've said it probably a thousand times that we need to give heart and energy all the way through the end of every point. Rafe, do you have an understanding of what it would mean to you and the rest of your team to win a national championship today? You know, you know not, not really. Uh, uh, the only title I've ever won was a high school cross country championship and I try to describe that feeling and I think I sound a lot like parents when they describe when they have their first kid. I don't really know. It's like I can't describe it, but there's just this incredible amount of love and respect that you have for your teammates, your world. Uh, it's, it's a feeling that's indescribable and it also changes you as a person. I know that everything after that high school cross country championship, I took more confidence into everything that I did. This is, this is uh, it's a little cliche. It might not be once in a lifetime and maybe twice in a lifetime or three times in a lifetime for a bunch of our players. Um, but 
this is an opportunity worth giving everything for at this point going forward. That's pretty cool perspective. We'll let you get back to work and try to earn that feeling in the second half. Thanks for joining us, Rafe. Great. Thanks so much. That's the head coach of yeah. Metro North, Rafe Steinhauer, who's been a captain with Andy Bosco. He had such glowing words about John Corber, one of the leaders of Connecticut Ultimate for years and years. Metro North in front of Slow White, 8-6 at the half in the mixed final. Welcome back to Rockford, everybody. Evan Lepler with Robin Wiseman. The mixed final has Metro North leading Slow White 8-6, despite a three-zip deficit in the early going, 8-3 after that. But let's talk about Slow White first. What did they do defensively that was impressive early on? They were taking away, you know, Metro North's game plan, which is to get the disc to Chris Mazur and, and force it into other people's hands on offense. And they did such a great job attacking on a turn getting that disc moving. Again, you see that layout D on Chris Mazur. Sean Doherty giving up the body for the D, and well, that made it three zip. Montgomery Butler to Hampton. But then Metro North started to find a rhythm, and it was Mazur and Bosco in the middle of everything. Yeah, they just have an insane amount of trust and able to just put the disc into some small spaces. Something that really helped Metro North was just watching the disc until the, the disc hit the ground or switched possession entirely. There were so many of those deflections that Metro North was able to maintain possession. Where you see this nice floaty disc here, you know, they really just kept their eyes on it and, and attacked the disc before Slow White was able to get it. Ben Ivers had a great scoring grab. Lucas Murphy had a great scoring grab. And Lauren Doyle making an impact running the space. And you see Metro North's handlers just being patient around the end zone and just able to swing the disc until somebody's open. Down the stretch, Chris Mazur breaking free to the end zone, celebrating an 8-6 halftime lead. Connecticut Metro North in front of Boston Slow White by two. Slow White will have the disc to start the second half. Well, Boston Slow White caught off to the magnificent start, but Metro North takes half 8-6. Marshall Goff, head coach of Slow White, joins us now. Your thoughts on how that first half transpired? A lot of good back and forth action. Sure, it was a lot of fun to watch, I'm sure, for the neutrals, but I'm not neutral. I don't mind blowing teams out, and that's not what happened in that half. What changed? Why did you guys get off to such a good start, and how did they find their rhythm? Uh, we were smooth at the beginning, and I think we squandered some opportunities. We had a couple of multi-turnover points that we didn't punch in, and that let them get their rhythm and start operating a little bit more smoothly. We have to take that away from them. We saw Tanner Johnson go down with you know an off-disc injury and haven't seen him play too many offensive points. How is that going to impact the second half for Slow White? He, he's going to be back in. He's all right? He's, he's going to be back in and doing what Tanner does. That is good to hear. What, what was the thing you told your team in the huddle to get ready for the second half? Well, we let them play reindeer games because we need to get loose. Right now, I'm not sure that it's so much about tactical changes as not pressing sometimes, making sure our lanes stay open. So those are tactical things, but also going back to playing the way we can play and trying to put the pressure back on them. Last thing, Marshall, I asked this to the Metro North coach as well. Do you have a concept and understanding of what it would mean to win a championship today? <laughs> well, I'm trying not to think about that one right now. We'll think about that one afterwards. But I know that this team puts in a ton of work really hard all season to get to this point. And so now we got to focus on the game and hopefully we'll have that to celebrate at the end. Fair enough, well said. Good luck in the second half. Thanks. See you afterwards. Marshall Goff, the head coach of Boston Slow White as his team will retake the field to begin the second half. Certainly good news about Tanner Johnson. 8-6 is your halftime score. Will we see another second half comeback or can Connecticut Metro North cap off their incredible season with a title? We'll find out. There's an understandable tendency to focus on the star players, but you look at the depth of both these teams, 14 different players scored in 14 points in the first half, Robin. I mean, it's incredible to see both teams work it around and use their entire roster. These are two extremely deep teams, and to see them kind of walk the walk, talk the talk. Six different players with assists for Slow White, obviously Mazur and Grin doing some of the heavy lifting for Metro North. Slow White does have an offensive point here to begin the second half. Mazur 
launches a scuba pull. Was that a scuba? It was just kind of like an upside down backhand. Okay. He's known for those cheeky throws. Oh, I love that they did a side stack right there off the pull, isolating Lexi Zalk into space. Tanner Johnson not playing on this offensive point. Maybe we'll see him out there more defensively in the second half. Certainly good to hear Marshall Goff say he's okay. Or he didn't actually say he was okay. He said he would be back out there in the second half. Those are not necessarily the same, I suppose. Up the line, Smith in a tight space. No. Off a couple hands. Great and pressure in the lane by Kendra Frederick Bosco. She is so big in the air and so willing to go up against any matchup in the air. Men, women, doesn't matter if it's Jeff Smith. She really pressures that pass and gets that turn. Korber for a long time has been one of the best athletes in the mixed division. That throw goes off his teammates hands. Dropped by Ivers. And that opening possession by Slow White, we saw the women really take a front seat in driving the offense up to the red zone. Vicky Chang just clears so much space for that swing. Able to find Lexi Zalk. Back to Smith. And a stoppage. <laughs> Trey, he nice toss to Chang. Let's suppose. Breaking the mark. I feel like they're a dump swing away from scoring, but that'll work too. Over the top to Jeff Smith. A couple turnovers on the point, one per side, but they do hold. Vicky Chang was so integral to creating space to getting that disc to the break side. That assist on, the, on that score there definitely was not a throw that would have worked, you know, most of the week thus far. Although the wind is picking up a little bit, it's still nowhere near as strong as it was this week. You had a pretty good grin on your face after that score went up. Was that because of the throw that would have been destroyed because of the wind, or were you thinking of something else? Nope, I was just thinking about how, you know, Slow White hasn't done that a lot this week, but we've seen them kind of using those higher backhands in bracket play as the wind has died down very successfully. When a lot of other teams were struggling to adapt to the conditions, Slow White has just instantly changed their game from a windy upwind, downwind type of field position game to managing possession, and that's why they're in the championship today. Another assist for Batista. Most veteran guy on Slow White, his 11th year with the program. Also played for Boston Ironside for a time. Could be a really big day for Boston. Slow White, Ironside, and Brood Squad all playing for championships today here in Rockford. Mazer running the show. To Murray. To Dayen. No. Almost run down by Allison Yum. Allison Yum is a great continuation cutter for Metro North. I'm not surprised to see her following that deep space and, and making a great athletic bid. You know, even if she was able to catch it, it would have been really difficult for her to get those, those feet and bounds to save that for a score. It was a great play. Well, Montgomery Butler just throws it as far as he can into the wind and the speed to run that disc down, remarkable. Whitehead picks up the assist. Annie Fisher's got the goal. And we're right back even in the final.
That throw by Montgomery Butler, you can see just how fast it comes off of his hands, but puts it up in the wind. Again, the wind picked up a little bit, so it just sits out in front of David White, Davis Whitehead, and he's able to just run that down right at his waist. I mean, that, that throw is basically Montgomery Butler saying Whitehead is faster than Bosco because Bosco had the head start and then Whitehead turned on the Jets. Right. And the thing I love about that throw is just he puts it up right in front of Davis Whitehead to go and run it down. As a thrower, you don't necessarily want to throw it into the middle of the field, but he puts it out near the cone, letting Davis Whitehead take an angle towards the disc to seal Andy Bosco off. The first break for the slow white D line since the third point of the game. We haven't had an opportunity to see the D line too much on the, the field for slow white, you know, as as Metro is kind of coming back from that deficit sure. early on. So eight all at the moment it's a game to seven. It could become a game to a smaller number than that. But 23 minutes away from the soft cap going on. Yes, Cat! Tub Sider! Tub Sider! Find him! We saw Tub! Set work! It's Johnson poaching away from John Palmer. Allow Palmer to get the under, then Mazer plucks it with a left paw. A uh, really good clear out there by John Palmer to open up the space for Kendra Frederick Bosco. And Kendra's really able to, to put her body in front of her defender and make that throwing lane open for Mazer. What a great grab from Mazer in that really tough defensive pressure. You see Kendra Frederick kind of lower her shoulder and think make Lexi Zalk think that she was attacking the break side and she just kind of cuts right in front of her and seals off Lexi Zalk, which is very difficult to do because Zalk is such a, a strong defender, very physical, and just uses her body really well to get that score. It'd be complicated to keep this stat for everybody, but you mark down the great clears of the game. A couple years ago, I called them crystal clears. In that play by John Palmer, if he lingered in that space, that entire possession may not go anywhere. That's correct. You know, if, you, if you're going to have the, the, the disc in the hands of somebody on the goal line, you want it in Chris Mazur's hands. And, you know, he could swing the disc off there, but he sees that Kendra Frederick's going to win that matchup in space. And it's, it's great to see that, you know, his teammate clears that space and, and lets Kendra attack. Lucas Murphy launching the pull. We got a good one here in the mixed final. Looking for Johnson. Beating young Joe Fontaine for that disc. And then contact, might have been a pick. That's really the first time we've seen Tanner Johnson getting separation in that deep space. You know, the okay, throw hung up a little bit longer than intended, but Tanner pick, Johnson's foul, going to get to one. that space and, and rip it down. Floating up there and ripped away. Jeff Smith makes the jumping crab to tie it up. You know, that's a pretty risky throwing decision at the, in the red zone. A little push off for Tanner Johnson. Kind of looked like the receiver had, or the defender had taken a bad angle at it anyways. But that throw to Jeff Smith, wow, that's very, it's a very small window. Again, we have a crosswind moving from left to right on your screen. And so it's going to hang up there for Jeff Smith to, to go and make a play on it. But again, it's, that's a hard one when you had such a beautiful offensive possession with so much space on the field that that's the throw choice in the red zone. But if anyone's going to get it done, it's Jeff Smith. That guy knows how to read a disc and knows how to make a play in the end zone. The fifth tie of the game. We were tied at fours, fives, sixes, eights, and nines. 
in the history of the mixed championship game. Only two mixed finals have gone to Universe. Most recently in 2011 when Blackbird got the best of Polar Bears in a thriller 17-16. Remember that one? Yeah, that was one of the most exciting mixed finals to watch. You, you see, you know, some of the stars who are in the women's division right now with Fury, they played with Blackbird that year and just took over the mixed division. There's nobody who could hang with them. And Polar Bears did a really good job to stop that offensive flow that they had on Blackbird, but still, it was very exciting. Went down to that very last point. And Nazaroff on that Blackbird team that won a title. The Polar Bears team is pretty darn good too. I think Simon Higgins and Eli Kearns, Lucas Dahlman, now stars for Revolver on that team. And yeah, Nazarov's impact in that game, you know, Blackbird, their offense really isolated her in the middle of the field. And as a thrower who can get the disc in any position and make it dangerous, I mean, they did such a fantastic job of taking advantage of her skill set. Hopefully, John Corber's all right. Lana Nazarov still, still has got it. Saw her bring Fury back into it almost single handedly down the stretch yesterday. See the kind of incidental contact there. Like Wurzel and Korber getting tangled. There was no. Okay, he caught an injury. Come in. I'm black in the south. Well, there we go. Oh my God. John Korber spent a season with Slow White. Five members of this Metro North team played for Slow White. Corber's an all business guy. He said how he didn't necessarily fit in as well with the goofy Slow White culture. The aspirational weirdness. And that's one of the great things about Ultimate. Different teams have different personalities. and there's not one right way to be successful. Right, I mean, ultimate is, it is, it, there's so many different types of team cultures and the, I mean, even when you go regionally in the ultimate community in general, every city kind of has their own dynamic and it, it makes it very interesting when you get to play all these different teams throughout the country, even across divisions. Again, we see Metro North in this this cup, you know, taking advantage of an athlete like Kendra Frederick. I mean, that position in the zone would typically be played by a man in the mixed game, but she's so tall, takes up a lot of space, and she reacts really well to the poppers who are coming into that cup. You like the decision to throw the zone here? Oh, great catch. Montgomery Butler shaken up. To answer your question, I do like the decision to play the zone. I think that Slow White has demonstrated that they're they're struggling to show patience at some points in the game. So trying to to change the rhythm and slow down that that transition offense. That disc took a bit, took a little bit of a beating on that landing as well. He's been such a big addition to this team. Obviously he played with Ironside, he also played with Bodie. A lot of players from that club team in this game. I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, Metro North breaking out of the zone, but they do tend to stay in the zone all the way down to the end zone to try and pressure the lateral movement. Smith able to knife that throw through the cup across the field to Whitehead. Johnson to the end zone. One thing that you don't typically see from a D-line is that they're patient enough against the zone. So that's part of the reason that Metro North will often throw this, this cup in transition. And so when you have someone like Jeff Smith come onto the field for an injury sub, you know, 
you might want to think about getting out, but Metro North sticks in that zone, hoping that they're going to make a risky throw up the line and Korber can go make a play downfield against a woman attacking some space. He's just a little bit too far out of the play to, to capitalize on that throw. Check out these throwing mechanics from Johnson. He's going to get low. Using his six foot four frame to hit Fisher in the end zone. Yeah, if he pops that disc up any higher, it gives Korber more time to, to make a play. And so he put a lot of speed behind that disc and kept it low, you know, so that Annie Fisher could be the only one in the vicinity when it came into the end zone. The 19 year old part time bus driver has his team five points away. I mean, if, if we, if we've seen this so far, so many lead changes, so many momentum changes. Sure. I think this one's going to go down to the wire. It's the first lead for Boston since it was 4 3. We're tied at fives, tied at sixes. <laughs> A break to take half, 8-6 for Metro North. Slow White responded early in the second. 8-8, eight, 9-9, eight, nine, nine, and then a break from Slow White. So they're in control now. If the O-line could hold the rest of the way, Slow White would take it. But as you suggested, I think we'll see some more twists and turns in this labyrinth of a mixed final. What an angle on that bid by Hannah Baranis just misses it. Carrie Byer coming to that disc. And she needed to because Kirsten Lundquist was right on her tail. You see the women turning up that pressure on D for Slow White. I mean, Slow White's defenders, I mean, they're known to be a team that can vary the pressure, especially on their women. Very intelligent defenders for Slow White. Mazer takes off. Swung back to Kennedy. Looking to tie it up at 10 apiece. That'll work. Nice grab by Dave Tadean. Yep. So we see Hannah Baranis just take that inside line. I mean, make, it makes Lauren Doyle have to make a really difficult play on the disc where she can't necessarily see the, the angle as she can watch it into her hands. And Carrie Byer picks up the assist. One thing that Carrie does on this assist is that she waits until um, her receiver kind of seals off the defender before she puts the disc. So she has to put that forehand a little bit faster and a little bit higher so that that slow white defender has no play at the disc. That's just, again, really great awareness by Carrie as a thrower. Tribute to her experience, ability to recognize that in that tight space. Carrie is one of my favorite players to play with. We've played some fun tournaments together like Poultry Days. She just has this great attitude where she, as soon as the disc is up, it's all business, but in between points, any stoppage, you know, she she's a lighthearted person and just really great to be around. This is not meant to be a criticism, Robin, but it seems like you've got a lot of favorite players to play with. You know, I mean, in this game, I would definitely say Carrie's my favorite one to play with. I also have a lot of players that I love to play against yeah. who really push me to, to bring, you know, to bring out the best in, in their competitors. And Here we go. Nice leaping grab. Todd Herman still has work to do. Tanner Johnson. Fakes right, looks left, right up the middle.
Slow White definitely feels comfortable putting those inside backhands into small spaces in their end zone set, especially to find Jeff Smith. That deep shot, you know, had a lot of edge and the receiver read it really well, stayed composed in the end zone. Finds Tanner Johnson again. They're very comfortable putting those inside backhands into small spaces to, for those scores. They seem less comfortable putting those around forehands in those small spaces. So Metro North's marking adjustment, it, you know, maybe they want to attack, they want to take away that inside space on the mark, be a little bit flatter, forcing them to throw in around forehand. And look at this cut from Smith. Just a quick little shimmy and then into the open space, trusting that Johnson will be able to break the mark with that low release backhand. Jeff Smith's impact on the game today, it's it's very high. I mean, he is such a he has such a veteran presence in a high stakes game and has really kept that end zone offense moving and able to find some interesting options when those stall counts have been high. Mazer centers to Kennedy. To Korber. Crowd wanted Palmer to let it fly. He gives it back to the Team USA gold medalist Chris Mazer. USA mixed team beat Australia in the finals WUGC this past June in London. by Kennedy, but Allison Young makes the play. Mazur was fouled. No contest. Coming in zero. When you watch Chris Mazur run an offense in the red zone, how does it compare to some of the other top handlers that kind of take charge for their teams in this spot of the field, in the men's game, in the women's game, or in the mixed game? A lot of handlers are a little bit more systematic, especially in the red zone. And you mentioned this, that Mazur's kind of that, that textbook rule breaker because he has so many interesting throws to use. He's not the kind of guy you want in his system. You want to let him kind of Impro improvise a little bit around the, the end zone to, to take what to take what he's given. And he the thing I love so much about him is he does have this quick pace give go kind of persona, but he just if if he's shut down in one area, he is just immediately attacking a different space and, and clearing to make to make space for his teammates. Not involved in the goal or the assist here, but certainly very involved in the point. And well I'm not sure if Kennedy didn't land with a disc before he leapt into the end zone. He'll get credit for the goal. Korber picks up the assist. The Mazer to Korber connection, that's something that that these two, I mean, they've been in this game before together. And I don't know, to watch them work together on the field and attack space on offense, I mean, those are two d very dangerous players who have a lot of experience together. John Korber is really known as a strategist in the mixed division, and I think that's why he hangs around. He just, he loves the strategy so much. It's part of the reason that Metro North will run some of those more interesting junk sets, especially in transition on offense. Well, like Chris Mazur, Korber was a baseball player, played a couple years at Tufts, and during that time he would occasionally drop by Tufts, Elephant Men pick up, pursued Baseball coaching a little bit during the summers, and then basically, well, I can play ultimate too. And you know, a guy like Mike Zalisk was really important in getting Korber to play ultimate. Summer before his junior year of college was the first time he played summer league and really started playing organized ultimate. Fortunat Mueller was on his summer league team. Wow. And another thing about John Korber is it's interesting hearing like 
that somebody had to kind of take him under his wing and, and get him into ultimate. He's kind of become that, that guy and recruiting some really good pickups like yep. Lauren Doyle to Metro North. He's got this way about making players feel really valued and that their roles are important. So when Corber tells you, you know, this is your role and this is where I see you, you feel really empowered by that. And it's a special quality in a leader. Ultimate community is fortunate to have many of those people. Vicki Chang fires it to the end zone where Dan Batista acrobatically makes the grab. In the second half, you see Vicki Chang making a bigger impact on offense. You know, they're hitting her when she's being poached, and she's just getting rid of the disc so quickly that she, I mean, Lauren Doyle doesn't have an opportunity to get a mark on her, just how fast that disc goes around to her. She turns, squares up, and just fires it into the end zone. You see Rachel Westgate being poached, getting rid of that disc quickly, and the Metro North women are, you know, they're chasing to have to catch up to these strong, slow white women on offense. Vicki Chang just attacking that space, getting that low release flick off, had to come really fast because that Metro North defender was hot in pursuit. Ever since Davis Whitehead hit Annie Fisher to tie it at eight, that was a break. Since then, there's only been one turnover in the last seven points for the two teams combined. And the one turnover allowed Slow White to kind of take charge. That was the break at 10-9 when Tanner Johnson, the low release backhand to Fisher and really clean ultimate. Yeah, this is, it sounds very similar to what happened at regionals. I mean, both teams played a very clean game. Um, talking to both teams about that game, it sounds like, you know, Metro North was able to break twice. Slow White was able to break, to break once and they didn't have very many opportunities. The crowd's cheering. They didn't like the holster to Kendra Frederick Bosco deep, but you know, she's in a really tough matchup right now. We saw that Erin Ray just shut down Sarah Anzio yesterday in the mixed division finals. She's kind of baiting those deep throws. Here we go, Montgomery Butler shoots it, and Davis Whitehead hauls it in. It's another break for Slow White. They've got some great momentum right now, and their, their defensive offense looks so just so composed i mean you have a lot of players on that d-line who in their past teams you know were huge contributors on their o-line is the reason that the d-line offense looks so composed largely because of miles montgomery butler he makes a, a great impact but those cutters are so great at attacking spaces and getting open and making decisive moves so that Montgomery Butler can put it out to space in front of them. If Davis Whitehead doesn't attack space decisively, you know, that throw might not go off. Montgomery Butler might have to swing it. So because he just takes off, changes direction, and attacks that deep space, Montgomery Butler can just air it out right in front of him again. We see that, that faster flick just right in front of Davis Whitehead. How many times these past couple of days have we seen this slow white D-line run that play with the cut coming from the front of the stack, almost from the handler core? That's been their bread and butter. Yeah, getting that defender back on their heels and then attacking that deep space. Again, those, those decisive deep cuts really enable Miles Montgomery Butler's throwing repertoire to shine. You hear the siren, that's the expiration of the clock for the soft cap. After this point, you'll add two to the higher score. And that will be the number we're playing to. Of course, it's a game to 15 unless we're tied 14 all. Oh, underneath layout D, Annie Fisher. Annie Fisher kind of baited that a little bit, stayed one or two steps behind Young. And when, when she saw that throw go up, she just exploded to get that inside position. A chance for Slow White to really take command right here. Yes, John, yes, John. Montgomery Butler on the sideline. He's 
been the anchor of so many of the D-line conversions. Timeout taken by Chris Waite. Annie Fisher has been gigantic. Again, you can see her start behind Allison Yum, and when she sees that disc go up, she takes that inside line, you know, forcing Allison Yum out to the sideline. She throws her body out there so Yum can't make an adjustment. What a great defender, just great footwork on that play. I would love to just show that clip to the girls that I coach about how to take an inside line. Don't worry about staying on the open side. That's okay, take that fast line, get the play. As you can see, both teams' offenses have been pretty good, but Slow White has for forced just a few more turnovers. Talked about it yesterday. Fisher getting ready to move to Montana to become a rancher. Who knows if she'll be playing with Slow White in the future. Lots of really interesting individual stories for both teams. Well, Annie Fisher will have an opportunity to play mixed in Big Sky Country. Montana is known for some really great mixed ultimate historically home to the mental toss fly coons and you know since then they've kind of disbanded and now there's several very strong mixed teams in montana that that i'm sure would be happy to have her once she moves out there mental toss fly coons beat shazam remains for the mixed title in 2008 team from missoula montana trigger happy won the mixed division back in 01. <laughs> It's going back. But I didn't recognize the pick until I called contact. Okay, so, so that's, a, that's a contact call still, still so, happening. So, so it's so a one. Yeah. Hey. One. Right. I saw Lexi. Oh. The most confusing situations are the concurrent calls at different spaces in the field. Yeah, it really requires that the players know the rules very well. It's a big defensive stand here for Metro North if they can get it. And they do. Great help in the lane by Korber. That's something that he's really well known for. Mazer intercepts. The goal that would have give, given Slow White a three score lead. I mean, that could have been the difference between 14 11. Game to 15 hard at 16 versus 13 12. Totally different complexion. Again, the crowd displeased with the holster. Yeah, I mean, the other thing to be aware of, although we're at the elite level, not everybody feels really comfortable throwing the disc up wind. You know, when they, especially if they don't recognize that receiver being wide open immediately with power position. Here's the defensive stand. We see Corber jump in the lane and, and bid it, it. It allowed Chris Mazur to kind of attack that break space and come up with the block. You like the contact rule, an addendum to the 11th edition? I do. As a thrower, it keeps the offense moving. You don't have to stop play, but again, it requires that the, oh. the mark has to adjust and, and drop their stall count down to zero. A clunker from Kennedy to the end zone for Katz on oh. the second effort. You know, just some miscommunication on the reset. I think uh, he thought that Mazur was going to be attacking the deep space or in the backfield. This gets launched up, and Kennedy just gets his hand on it the last second. But, wow, we saw that happen in the first half where Slow White was tipping the disc, unable to finish off that defensive block. 
And here we see Slow White able to to be the one to capitalize on a defensive, you know, a great defensive play, but. Oh, well, it's been a wacky game, Robin, from the very start with these tip discs, deflected discs. Frisbee going not necessarily to the intended receiver, but still getting caught. And that is a huge turning point. Slow White has led by three before in this game, but it was back in the very early going when it was three zip after three consecutive breaks. From there, Metro North stormed back, tied it at four, and then took half eight six. The second half, however, has been won eight three by Slow White with three scores in a row since it was 11 all. In the second half, Slow White has definitely increased the defensive pressure downfield. Metro North's really used to being able to swing the disc and get big yards in the middle of the field. Um, in the first half, Slow White was kind of giving too much space in the middle of the stack. Um, so that's how they were able to work the disc up. But now you see that when the disc is swinging, Slow White is just closing that gap in the middle of the field and those immediate continuations aren't there anymore for Metro North. Boston Slow White on defense. The program began in 2004, so this makes it year 13 for Slow White. They were in the finals in 06 and 07. Could 2016 be Boston Slow White's first championship in mixed? Another miscommunication. Handler thought that, that his receiver was going to come under, but quick shake and bake, and that's game. Truesdale's got the winner. Boston Slow White champions in the mixed division for the first time. It's pretty exciting to, to witness history for Slow White, you know, seeing them in so many competitive games. You know, it's a team that typically peaks early. We saw them win the U.S. Open, and then you wonder, are they going to be able to get it done when they, at Nationals, can they sustain that positive effort and that, in, that intensity all season long? Because it a, it's a long season. And to see them just hit the gas pedal in the second half and just take over defensively against a very strong and composed Metro North offense. Another assist from Miles Montgomery Butler to cap it off. And you could see the body language from John Palmer when he did not come up with that disc, didn't make the cut. You could sense the balloon deflating for Metro North. A great season for this team from Connecticut and New York coming together. But Dave Truesdale comes up with a winning catch and for Slow White, this, this day's been coming for a long time. The champions in the mixed division, Boston Slow White, 15-11 over Metro North. We'll be back. The 2016 USA Ultimate National Championships are presented by Discraft Ultra Star, the official disc of USA Ultimate. Discraft Ultra Star now available at over 1,900 U.S. retail locations, including all Dick Sporting Goods and Hibbit Sports Stores. Buy five Ultimate, apparel made specifically for Ultimate players by Ultimate players. Visit fiveultimate.com for everything from Discraft Ultra Stars to jerseys, shorts, and custom team uniforms. And by the Women's Sports Foundation, ensuring quality and leadership opportunities for girls and women through sports.
A memorable day here in Rockford for both teams. Connecticut Metro North falls short in the final as Boston Slow White closed it out on a 4-0 run. But the Discraft play of the game happened early. Ben Ivers to make it 3-2. Look at this catch. Yeah, that body awareness to be able to keep his toes down and, and reel the disc in as it was trailing away from him, that's, it was incredible to watch. Certainly got both feet in. That was a, a key critical part of Metro North's comeback. They were down 3-0, they took half 8-6, but in the second half, a 9-3 performance from Boston Slow White. They are the champs and their happy head coach. Marshall Goff joins us. Can you think about the moment now? What does it feel like? Can you describe it? Oh, it's going to take me a while to turn this into poetry, but it feels pretty good. This is a heck of a reward for all the work that goes into this, all the talent on this team, all the heart to be down and then just come back. And, you know, in the huddle we talked about we want to play fun, slow white ultimate, and that's how we do it, and this team found it. What was the key in the second half to dominate 9-3? Well, I mean, a 9-3 run is good, but I think the biggest thing is we took care of our opportunities. We created some pressure, which is what we have to do. I mean, we did shuffle a little bit who was covering whom and how we were doing that, but I think a lot of that was heart. Our sidelines up the entire time. You know, you win this thing between the lines, but it's got to start outside the lines. Otherwise, you can't do that. The offense seemed to have it just started to integrate the women a lot more earlier, especially Vicki Chang. How, you know, she really stepped up this game. How did that help the offense, you know, keep those possessions quick and clean? Well, she's ready to throw at any time, and she's available a lot. When they cover somebody, we always have Vicky. Heck, if they try to cover Vicky, we usually have Vicky. And she found that for sure. She came in here this weekend, you know, it's like Thursday might have been slow for Vicky, but she was all the way Vicky by the time we got here, ready to go and ready just to deliver. That throw into the end zone. Uh, you know, we have Dan Batista playing what he claims is his last game, no matter what I'm going to try to tell him. <laughs> and to, for him to have a play like that, you know, that's just great teamwork between two teammates, and Vicky is bringing that every day. If it is the last one, it's a pretty good one to go out upon. Can you describe what the feeling was like in that mosh pit of celebration after Dave Truesdale caught the winning score? Oh, it's so hard to do that. It's so hard to do that right now. There's just so much joy, so much elation. There's so much pressure that people put on themselves, even though this is a loose and fun team. And so there's that just enormous release of positive energy. This team loves each other so much, and that is all there in the huddle. Congratulations, Marshall Goff. You're a national champion. Thank you very much, and thank you for all you guys are doing. Appreciate it. Marshall Goff, the victorious head coach of Boston Slow White. Our player of the game, presented by Five Ultimate, the spirited player of the game, Jeff Smith. There were a lot of good players for Slow White today, but he was an in integral piece and a cog throughout the entire tournament. Yeah, and is he, is he especially found a knack for getting the disc in tight spaces in the red zone and, and somehow just making those spaces seem more open than they actually were. And if it wasn't Jeff Smith throwing or catching a goal, it was often Miles Montgomery Butler doing that for Slow White. In his third year with the team, Miles, you finally reached the, the top of the mixed division. How's it feel? Feels great. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Um, there are people in this team who've been on the team for over 10 years. Uh, it's a really long running mixed team and it just feels so great to finally get it. It felt like that one play off a turn where you would pick up the disc and a cut would come from the handler set or the front of the stack and you would launch it deep and basically let your cutters do their work. That worked for you so many times. When did you realize that that could be so successful for you? Um, I mean, part of it's the surface. Playing on turf, uh, people are faster. Uh, they're faster than defenders recognize that they can be. And so when I see one of our fast guys going, I can take a shot and be pretty confident that he's going to get it. As a coach, I've enjoyed watching you kind of put on a throwing clinic, just showcasing so many different throws. What advice do you have for players who watch this game about how to elevate their throwing game? Uh, well, if you're under 19, I'd say go to Nutsy, the National Ultimate Training Camp. Uh, if you are over 19, I would say just get out and throw a lot. Um, you can pick up a lot by watching other people throw, and if you can get those people to teach you, uh, you should go out and do that. You probably want to celebrate, and you'll probably get to do that while watching another couple of Boston teams that you really enjoy. What's this, the rest of the day going to be like for you? 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've got a lot of work to do, but this, the games are going to be too good to do my work, so I'm just going to sit and watch them. I'm really excited to watch uh, Ironside and watch Bruce Squad and hope they can uh, both pull it off. You will not be the first Ultimate player to procrastinate by watching <laughs> Ultimate. I guarantee you that. Miles Montgomery yeah. Butler, congratulations. Great job. It was fun to watch. Thank you. Go enjoy it with your teammates. Boston Slow White gets the job done. Interestingly, Robin, Slow White had 10 Ds in the game. In the first half, they had six unforced turnovers. In the second half, they had none. And that really helped them put the game away. Yeah, especially the increased defensive pressure by their women downfield. They generated some key blocks towards that end stretch, and they really pulled away from Metro North. The eighth seed went on a pretty impressive run led by the Boscos, Chris Mazur, John Korber, and many other solid players. Hopefully, they will be back. But the champion in the mixed division in 2016, it's Boston Slow White. In their 13th year as a program, it turned out to be the luckiest year of all. Boston Slow White 15, Connecticut Metro North 11. That's the final in the mixed division. Revolver and Ironside coming up next at 1.30 Eastern. But for now, we say so long. For Robin Wiseman, this is Evan Leffler. One down, two to go on Championship Sunday here in Rockford.